content to do. So, why not we get into it, huh? We got a drama mama. You all came here for content, not just for updates about my silly stream and the, the shit I'm doing, whatever. We got content to do. So first, we got to play the theme. Can we play the drama mama theme written by our one and only very own Dan Starlight? I think we can. Let's play it. Oops, the audio's not on. There we go. Nice, nice. <laughs> got to get us all ready because as always we do the due diligence in drama mama there isn't yet dovakeen not yet but you got pompo jammer yeah absolutely i won't So what are we going to be talking about today on this episode of Drama Mama Investigates? Well, we're going to investigate a strange little piece of drama that happened a couple of days of, uh, uh, hey, good job, Dan Starlight. We're going to be investigating a little tiny explosion of drama that happened around an account that some of you may know. Some of you may know this account. Have you ever heard of Socialist Dog Mom? Anybody heard of Socialist Dog Mom, also known as Molly Con Conger or Conjure? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it 100% correctly. Okay, some of you do, some of you don't. Well, I'm going to teach you who this person is and what happened. Because as it turns out, it was some pretty major lefty drama. Any relation is to, any relation to you, Socialist Yoda Mom? No, that's me. Um, but I do, I do find this account to be rather compelling. Is she good or bad? Well, we're going to find out. I try not to give any takes beforehand. So I want to be, um, clear about what someone's history is. And then we can determine what the takes were, what happened, what the reaction was. And then we do all the takes at the end after we do the investigation. So. Let me tell you about Molly Conjure, also known as, on Twitter, as Socialist Dog Mom. And here, let me just link you. I'll get, we'll get her account up right here, actually. I'll, I'll show you it directly. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Take a look. This is Molly Conjure. Hi, Molly. Um, as you can see, I follow her. Um, and, uh, she has some really, really cute puppies and they're really cute. And mostly she tweets about her dogs. However, occasionally she does some pretty interesting work. Now, um, Molly Conjure has been around a while on Twitter alone. She's been here since 2009. Holy shit. That is an old account. And that's a big account. 94,000 followers been around here since 2009 damn that's a long time to be on the internet um oh pen s main we're just beginning the drama mama segment so don't worry you are just in time so i just want to talk about a little bit about what i was able to discover about socialist dog mom because here's the great thing before this all started i was not familiar with socialist dog mom yet even though a lot of people know who she is so let me just show you some of the stuff um, that she has done in the past. She is an anti-fascist reporter and activist. And she wrote this article um, about a year ago. I lost my job for keeping Charlottesville police accountable. I do it again by Molly Conjure. Damn, sounded kind of based a little bit. Yeah, sounded kind of based, just, just saying. Naively, I assumed the publication I worked for was committed to unashamed truth-telling as I was. I was wrong. 
When the editor of a weekly paper approached me about writing a regular column about local politics, the first thing I asked her was, are you sure you know what you'd be getting yourself into? That was in February. I had been live tweeting Charlottesville city government meetings for a year and a half, ever since the deadly Unite the Right rally in August 2017. Entirely by accident, I had created a fairly large audience for what amounted to municipal meeting minutes arranged by a mouthy socialist. Now, just so you know, Molly Conjure still does this. If you go to Molly Conjure's timeline and you scroll down a little bit, you will find tweets upon tweets of her summarizing what's going on in Charlottesville about the politics. She will literally report exactly what's happening in these meetings to all of the people in Charlottesville who are interested in knowing what local politics is going on. That's pretty cool because a lot of people can't actually, um, yeah, yeah, here, we're going to link it. Y'all can follow her if you want to. Yeah, here you go. I think this drama is incredibly uh, uh, fucking Pepe mods. Yeah, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Don't worry. You're good. Um, so there is Socialist Dog Mom if you want to to follow her, regardless of, of what we conclude in this drama. Okay? So, um, again, it didn't take me long to discover this. I scrolled down a little bit on her Twitter, and I discovered, wow, this person is summarizing all the meetings of their local politics. A lot of people can't go to those, um, to those meetings, you know, a lot of people can't go, they don't have the time or the, or whatever, or they're not, you know, they work during the time, they can't go to local politics meetings, and so instead, we have Molly Conjure to do it for us, which is pretty fucking cool, I might be m mixing up her name, and I apologize if I keep saying it incorrectly, um, Though I had never written for a publication before, my concern wasn't whether I could produce readable content. It was whether the paper was prepared to be targeted by two primary distractors of my work, neoliberals and neo-Nazis. I wrote just six pieces before the column was canceled, two centered on the need for police accountability in a city traumatized by the memory of officers standing by as neo-Nazis beat residents in the street. In a column published in May, I mentioned a photograph taken in August 2017 of an officer with his arms around Jason Napier, James Napier, of the neo-Confederate group The Highwaymen, and Tammy Lee of the American Freedom Keepers Militia. Lee's caption read, You should know the police escorted us and worked with us to be there. Remember, we've talked about this many times in the past on this channel. We've talked about how deeply the police have ties with white nationalist groups. Isn't that kind of fucking weird? Isn't it weird that so many of our police departments have ties to neo-Nazi and explicitly racist groups like the KKK? It's kind of weird. That just seems a little fucked to me. And I think it's a good thing, in fact, that we have people who are willing to report on that, like Molly Conjure in this case. The image of a Charlottesville officer with his arm around a member of a white supremacist militia was to me a perfect illustration of a department choosing to ignore the community it serves. It was a picture of willful ignorance and complicity, of harm through inaction. The officer could have been any member of his department. I shouldn't have been surprised when I received a letter from the attorney for the local Southern States Police Benevolent Association sent on behalf of the officer in the picture. One of the remarks the letter quoted and claimed to be odious and defamatory was taken directly from after the action report commissioned by the city about police contact that summer. I have not reached out to the attorney who prepared the report. I doubt he received a similar letter. Hmm. I read the letter. I spoke to an attorney. I spoke to another. I retained one. I wasn't worried. Even with my layman's eyes, I could see right through what was clearly an empty threat. There is a certain class of citizen for whom hurt feelings are the worst form of assault, and the best redress is a demand for an apology on legal letterhead. Naively, I assumed the paper was as committed to unashamed truth-telling as I was, and that it would too take the letter in stride. It did not. I'm not surprised a police officer and former prosecutor would try to weaponize the legal system to silence a critic. I am surprised the paper's owners reacted with such incredible cowardice. What good is journalism that folds when confronted by those in power? How can we trust local media that allows the police union to dictate what is published about the police? True! These are really fucking good questions. Despite the editor's best efforts on my behalf and the absence of any follow-through on the threat of a defamation suit, the paper's owners did not want to continue to run my column. The attorney for the police union got exactly what she wanted. 
The paper fired the person who wouldn't stop publicly advocating for a strong civilian review board, a nascent body whose failure would benefit the attorney's clients. Damn. I have now spent two years carving out a strange, precarious little niche as a local journalist. I crowdfund most of my income, and I spend my days attending city board and commission meetings or sitting in court. I document both the ongoing legal fallout of Unite the Right, in 2017 that made my city's name synonymous with white supremacist violence and the day-to-day -day banalities of the local government that created the conditions that allowed it to happen. I get so many death threats, I can catalog them by the gunmaker mentioned. I babysit to make rent. But I write for and about a community I love and believe in and to which I feel accountable. And if I had my short time with a paper byline again, I wouldn't pull any punches. So damn. It looks like this is someone who's really, really been involved with fighting truly man malignant forces and has actually suffered quite a lot of personal recourse for it. It seems weird to me. Yeah, true praxis. Actually going out, doing the boring things, taking the notes of the local politics so that we can digest it and understand it, so we can know what's going on, so that we can make the world a better place, so that we don't have another Unite the Right. But there's more we got to dig into. We got to dig into this because there's more. All right. So Molly Conjure recently did something pretty cool. Let me just show you this. Let me just show you this. And again, this is not me passing judgment on the drama yet. This is just me saying this is pretty cool. In fact, this happened on Christmas Day. Let's take a look. This is Molly Conjure. I hope you all will join me in, oops, in wishing a Merry Christmas to the Prince William County Sheriff Office's Human Interaction Specialist, Deputy Aaron Hoffman, or as he's known on, par on Parlor, We the People Warrior. Human Interaction Specialist, Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, a.k.a. Charlottesville. Um, well, the Prince William County, which Charlottesville is in. We the people will not be muzzled with masks, will not be silenced, will not concede to tyranny. We will not be bullied. We the people own this country. Virginia Patriot and the bat black sheep. That's a pretty unique little profile picture. A reverse image show search shows that it's actually a custom piece of art purchased two weeks ago by Grant Tucker. Excellent work and communication skills were perfect. So here we have Grant Tucker. But who is Grant Tucker, you're probably asking? Grant Tucker is not a real person, but a stage name that Deputy Hoffman uses for his side career as an aspiring country musician. Check out his SoundCloud. It sucks. So, here's Deputy Hoffman. His nickname is Grant Tucker. Grant Tucker bought this art on Fiverr and uses it on his Parlor account. And we're going to find out what the fuck this guy does on Parlor. Grant Tucker has a Facebook profile, I guess to network with other musicians, but he couldn't help but post a smiling photo of himself in his Prince Williams County Sheriff's uniform with his name tag visible. Uh-oh, Grant Tucker. Oh shit, Hoffman. Oh, we got him. That's the person. He is the person. He's definitely the person who's running this account, We the People, on Parlor. Now, you might say, well, he's just using Parlor. But he's not just using Parler. He's not. Here's a little bit of copaganda from the Prince Williams County Sheriff's Department Facebook page with Deputy Aaron Hoffman letting a little boy push some buttons in his cruiser. cruiser. Over on Parler, though, Deputy Hoffman caught the attention of people monitoring Proud Boy Jeremy Bertino in the aftermath of the last violent Proud Boy gathering in D.C. That's the one that Dylan was at. We know what happened there. A lot of people got hurt there. People got, peaceful protesters got stabbed by Proud Boys. Proud Boys literally went on the offensive as they always do. Just saying, we have video evidence of this. Uh, anyway, Deputy Hoffman stated he's prepared to refuse orders when the time comes to fight alongside the Proud Boys. Hmm, little weird. 
So all these people who scream back the blue constantly, how do you feel about what happened at the Capitol in Oregon yesterday? The police protected Big Daddy while he decided what rights to give us. I back good police who will protect your rights over their pensions, but don't get it twisted. They will be the first line of defense for the maggot politicians in office. Some will lay down the badge and join us. Others will blindly defend the corrupt politicians who aim to enslave you. To police everywhere, pick a fucking side. This war is inevitable. You will find yourself at a crossroads, and when you do, you will know. Will you follow the unconstitutional orders of your superiors, or will you protect and defend the people? The choice is yours, but it's coming. Oh shit, that's some civil war rhetoric. From a cop. We the people warrior. Some of us will keep our, oh sorry, this isn't from the cop. This is from one of the proud boys. Some of us will keep our badge on and enforce the constitution upon those who attack we the people. I will not resign my powers given under oath. My pledge was before God and to the people, not to a governor, mayor, country executive, county executive, or any other commie that thinks the rule over the people. Yikers! There's the cop saying that he will disobey orders in the name of the people, aka Donald Trump. AKA the Proud Boys. This is our time to refresh the Tree of Liberty. Now, if you don't know what this means right here, this means from time, uh, there's a quote. Uh, let me just, I, I can't remember who said it. Um, um, must be refreshed. Uh, what is it called? Oh yeah, this is Thomas Jefferson. The Tree of Liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. So, literally, war rhetoric, saying every from time to time, patriots have to rise up and kill tyrants in order to, f to lead to liberty. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson. I, I couldn't remember right off the top of my head. Um, so, we can see where this is going, right? We can see where this is going. A lot of this. A lot of this. A lot of this posting, right? Deputy Hoffman isn't interested in marching in D.C., and not just because he can't take his gun. He wants patriots to storm the homes of their local liberal judges and politicians to remove them. Why are we marching again? We mock the socialist libtards for attempting the same failing ideologies country to country, state to state, generation to generation, who still expect a different result other than failure. But we are doing the same thing. Do you really think the communists will stop now just because you wore your Trump hat, superhero Trump flag, and march in the cold? Wake the fuck up. They have nothing to lose now that they're exposed. They will keep going. They want you to brawl with drug addicts and mentally ill pawns in the street. Quit falling for the obvious. Your pride makes you think marching is it makes a difference, and at least you're part of something, but the reality is much darker. Physically take back your states, not by votes, phone calls, or emails, but by force. Now is the time, and D.C. is not the target. More, exact same thing. As we can see, find the homes of every governor, mayor, attorney general, liberal judge, senator, congressman, and every major media, social media CEO. Find them, remove them from their sanctuary. Bring the nightmare to where they lay their heads and kiss their loved ones. Show them that they are not untouchable. Do you realize this is a cop? This is a policeman, a deputy sheriff, who is currently advocating to go and literally kill and terrorize the families of liberal politicians yes thankfully we'll get there so as you can see i think i've given you enough we're not going to go through all of it as you can see look at this oh shit here's his here's his tactical gear he's photo photographing look at how armed he is damn he's got all kinds of shit there damn how many guns does he have looks like w one sniper rifle and a couple of uh of probably modified weapons this is wild Look at this. These are military weapons. Yeah. Be careful out there, Somniostatic. All I'm saying. And he keeps going. He talks about killing nurses. Um, he talks about all kinds of stuff. Uh, he talks about murdering the mentally ill. All kinds of stuff. Wow, what a wild guy. Making f Here's some transphobia. And guess what? Early yesterday, our agency was notified about the disturbing comments being made on several social media outlets by a deputy sheriff. Sheriff Hill was notified and ordered an internal affairs investigation. The investigation has concluded and the deputy has been terminated from employment within our office. We thank the public for bringing this to our attention. Damn! 
toasted another fucking bloody fascist too stupid to keep private owned totally owned pretty awesome right that's pretty good huh so this was reporting done by molly conjure unfortunately there's one other little detail here that i want to give some credit to and that is that her work her digging was stolen by the washington post antonio olivio um antonio olivio um wrote up the entire story and did not credit molly conjure no no credit to molly conjure just so you know and also didn't even use this guy didn't even use the the worst quotes he wrote a thing that basically just said oh well he was fired for saying i will kill anyone that touches my children without my consent not a threat but a promise this is not what he was fired by he was fired for everything else but this guy stole her work and then rewrote an article that was favorable to the cop nice job antonio olivio nice job my dude sick shit but yeah just wanted to give a little bit of a credit there where credit is due just saying yeah god damn it waypo yeah thankfully he got called out now all of this is a preamble to what the drama actually is you know um you know it's 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 interesting so I have a little tweet here, and I'm going to show you what started the drama and why this is drama mama and not something else. Because, you know, drama is incredibly silly and often weaponized to do stupid bullshit. So here we go. Let me just show you. Let me just get this tweet up here. It takes a second to load because it's archived. It was deleted. Um, but we have archives, thankfully. Give me a second here. Hopefully it will actually load. Yes, here it goes. Load, 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 please. There we go. On November 24th, 2019, so over a year ago, Molly Conjure tweeted about her experience um, with, uh, with um, what was I going to say? Um, her experience with uh, some of the people involved in shootings oh thank you very much brit mouse let me just read these tweets these were the tweets that started everything this isn't altogether new men like nellen have long been making violent threats and then adding in minecraft or pretending they were just kidding but this is clearly explicitly meant as a violent threat violent threat to two specific women he is telling us that he is hunting us now this is her talking about uh, a guy named paul nellen who uh, um, ended up being reported on. We don't need to worry much about ta Paul Nellen. Here's where the drama came in. I've been very clear about my unwillingness to speak to law enforcement, but I also live every day with the question of whether 11 people would have been murdered at the Tree of Life synagogue if I had reported Robert Bauer's threats. Paul Nellen is going to hurt someone. So, what do you think could come from this what do you think could happen from this huh seems pretty like someone's talking about their experiences right well let me just show you some of the stuff that happened so following yes you got it sjw you got it here we go so following now now keep in mind this tweet as you can see did not even get that much this 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 is like this was screen capped very early this was like um you know archived very early on it didn't even have that much traction recently as in a couple of days ago this tweet was brought back up accusing molly conjure of having inside information on the shooting that she didn't report and a in i know and we'll get there and an enormous amount of people tweeted like i mean a lot of people tweeted about this now interestingly most of the original tweets ended up getting deleted are you starting to hear some echoes of what we've been talking about with how internet harassment works bunch of people now let me just tell you um 
if I can see, I don't even know if I ha have been able to find the original tweets, but here are some of the responses to the original tweets. And I'll show you what we're talking about here. So right here is Robert Evans responding to a tweet that is now privated and hidden. So you can't even see this tweet anymore. That got a crazy amount of cover of coverage. Um, Molly gets more death threats than anybody I know. I can tell you from experience that law enforcement virtually never takes those threats seriously. You are being a dick to someone who's done more work and risked her skin more often than you can conceive of. This was in response to, yeah, Robert Evans is POG, by the way. Robert Evans is a very, very well-established Portland journalist who, um, does investigative journalism for Bellingcat and a bunch of other stuff. Really cool, does on-the-ground reported reporting journalism really cool guy um uh but yeah it blew up on the 26th so interesting yeah a little interesting right so this tweet exploded on the 26th of december um and on the 26th of december was one day after she outed that nazi hmm little strange right so what were the accusations anti-semitism a bunch of what appeared to be anonymous internet teenagers started retweeting the the year old tweet of Molly Conjure talking about survivors guilt following the tree of life shooting and they said that she had information about the shooting that she didn't tell and was therefore an anti-semite I'm not kidding you now again a lot of these tweets got deleted shortly afterwards, so it's pretty tough to find the original tweets anymore, and all the accounts have now gone private. Little weird how that works. And yep, they attacked any Jewish person who stood up for her. It was really bad. Now, it gets a little bit weirder too, um, because uh, as it turns out, that's not even close to the truth. Molly Conjure did not have any information about threats made to the Tree of Life. She had threats made to her. The guy, Robert Bauer, who ended up shooting up the Tree of Life synagogue, had threatened her personally. And she chose not to go to the police because she knows that these people do this all the time. But as it turned out, this specific guy ended up actually doing something. But some people bring up a whole bunch of good points. Let me just show you real quick. I've got a couple of other um, little pieces here. Let me see if I've got the link here. One moment. Here we go. This is a really great th thread done by a, a friend and supporter of Molly. Molly, like everyone else who read Gab in 2017, knew that any number of people who wrote the post she read were capable of murder and that it was just a matter of time. She and a lot of other people tried their hardest to shut down Gab. Yep. I mean, that's what it seems like. Here's the linky. You, if you see him, if you're seeing a post she wrote and thinking, well, why didn't she report him? It's because Bowers hadn't made any specific threats. I mean, he did end up making threats to her. His entire timeline, like those of dozens of people on Gab, consisted of nothing but the vilest threats and debasement. Bowers interacted with da Daniel Jack Corbin McMahon, currently in jail for cyber stalking a, Seville, uh, a, a Charlottesville City Council candidate. And oddly enough, not for the hundreds of threats of rape and debasement he made at any woman even remotely connected with Seville anti-fascist activities. The signal-to-noise ratio there, like it was on Discord and Telegram and afterwards afterwards, and on Parler now, was absurd. She and others were snorkeling through, through, I think they meant to say, cascades of rat shit, hoping to find and stop the next murderer. That she continues to work to expose fascist activities in America as opposed to, say, walking in front of a Mack truck is a testimony to her commitment. That she does it with such humor and good grace and genuine love for human and beast is testimony to something greater. Floating around the internet is a dump of every gab post made up until perhaps two years ago or so. Bauer's posts are not hard to find. I read his posts. There was nothing to differentiate them from anyone else's. If there's a villain or two in this story, it's Amy and Andy Torba, the leaders of gab. Bad faith merchants who profited off of hatred, anti-Semitism, and racism. It's okay. We're not talking about it anymore, Dan Starlight. Don't worry. That's just the context. Okay? That's the context. We're not talking about that specifically anymore. Um, what's Gab? No, Gab was a Twitter alike. Um, Gab was like a Twitter clone 
for right wingers and it's uh down now it failed financially like they ran out of money i'm very sorry dan starlight but yeah go enjoy dinner yeah i think gab got nuked or either that or it's just like yeah it was parlor before parlor i don't even know if it's still up i don't think it's up anymore oops sorry oh i guess it is still up i don't know i think it got bought out though um yeah it's nazi tumblr basically yeah I think it still exists, but I think it's been like rebranded and like the people aren't involved in it. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I don't follow these things anymore. I don't follow Gab anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. It got rebooted. Yeah. People archive parlor. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And guess what? It got so out of hand. In fact, that guess who ended up reporting on it? All of this talk about Molly Conjure secretly being a, um, a anti-Semite. Guess what? Guess who got involved? Nope. We got fucking the post-millennial. Just as bad, honestly. The post-millennial. Uh, you know, Andy Nyo's mag? Damn. Antifa apologist journalist arrested for participating in Richmond riot. Damn. So this got reposted. Now, they'd already written this about her. And little supporters of the post-millennial ended up reposting this to try and make her look bad and to send this to her employers. And, and as we know, remember, Molly Conjure has already been fired because of this. So she's lost money and lost opportunities. Doesn't that sound like the real cancel culture? The real cancel culture? Little strange. Anyway, so post-millennial followers were reposting this and sending it to people. Molly Conjure, a journalist and communist activist who has argued that Antifa is peaceful, was arrested for participating in the riots in Richmond, Virginia on Monday. Police say the violent Richmond riots were instigated by white supremacists. Madeline Conger, a.k.a. Molly Conger, or Socialist Dog Mom, a 30-year-old activist from Charlottesville, was arrested and charged. Conger is a communist activist and writer. Andy Neo cited in this in this article. Contra responded to Neo's reporting of her arrest, accusing him with no evidence of placing her on the neo-Nazi Adam Waffen division's kill list. Guess what? There's evidence of that. And that did happen. Wow. Andy Neo knows full well his followers will threaten to shoot me in the head. That's why he posted it. He loves making kill lists. True, he does. He's been caught with it multiple times. Andy Neo knows full well his followers were threatened to shoot me in the head. Oh, I just read that. Oops. This isn't Conjure's first dispute with Nyo. Now, keep in mind, weird thing about this, Andy Nyo writes, and if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, edits for the post-millennial. Huh. Seems like there might be a little bit of a conflict of interest in this story, huh? A little weird. She has repeatedly called him a threat to our community, a grifter who presides kill lists to Adam Waffen. Well, he does do that. Nyo? I think it's Nyo. Um, yeah, the Antifa community she's talking about parroted the violence in Portland, setting fires, smashing windows, and assaulting responding police officers with rocks. Interesting that they don't mention, interesting that you get one little mention of, oh yeah, this was instigated by white supremacists. Literally, even the police admitted that the Richmond riots were instigated by white supremacists. Weird how that works. Even the police couldn't cover it up. Anyway, Conger was among the 20 rioters arrested. A self-proclaimed communist, she was charged with misdemeanor trespassing. Damn, talk about a buried lead. Misdemeanor trespassing. That means you were actually, um, this, this means you were just act like, this is like, oops, I was accidentally standing uh, in a public park after hours. Literally nothing crime. Also, guess what? It was dropped. Whoops which is slightly more serious than treason, she tw tweeted. What? What does that even mean? Actually, I was charged with misdemeanor trespassing, which is slightly more serious than treason. Nice. Communists are everywhere. There could be some standing near a public park in your town right now. She's got a good, I will say. This is funny. She has said that most anarchists she knows spend their organizing energy feeding people and writing letters to the incarcerated. Hey, same thing for me. Damn. 
Oh, okay. No? All right. Sure. Yeah. Damn. She had said that most anarchists, you know, hey, that's true. It's true. That's what they do. It's weird. They do that here, too. She let former Vice President Joe Biden know they're actually pretty chill when he advocated for their prosecution. Conger also retweeted a claim defending Antifa for stockpiling contraband. Uh, agitators were just eating beans when officials posted their cache of confiscated weapons. Hmm. Interesting. There's that beans and cans thing again. No, <laughs> this is so sad. Anyway, you can see where this is going. So this was, this was then spammed at her and attempted to, uh, further damage her, um, um, her career. Hey, look at this. More disinfo. Now, this is just a tiny account, but who really gives a shit? Madeline Molly Conjure has an arrest record and was fired from her job as a reporter. Gee, wonder why. Well, guess what? Interestingly, we know why. Because here on Drama Mama, we always do the digging. We always find out the bottom of things. So, there we have it. That's the summary of the drama. Now, it's kind of weird. Actually, there's one other thing I wanted to show, actually. Let me show you one other thing. Because um, Molly Conjure talked about this. Let me just let me just bring these up real quick. Uh, these ones I didn't save, but now that I'm thinking of it, I'm wishing I had because... Let me get them. Here we go. Lots of kids posting screenshots of the block as if it's some kind of proof of malice. I am simply blocking all the teens I find so as to avoid accidentally cyberbullying them. It's for their benefit and safety. I'm not going to engage with this any further. Contrary to a series of wild allegations, I do not actually have any control over what people post. Furthermore, if you can't stand to be corrected, I suggest not engaging in a vicious smear campaign. Please remember that this is an internet full of adults. If you believe you need to be protected online because you're a minor, I suggest you keep a locked account where you safely interact with other minors. Good advice. I am not responsible for the posts of others, but you are responsible for your posts, regardless of how fully formed your frontal lobe is. I would earnestly request that all non-cops take a day off from the frenzied posting to consider the way they've handled this situation. And just so you know, this one, now of course they're all deleted. But this one was also accused, because she said this, of ableism. Now, it's very hard to track the thousands and thousands of comments of random teens on the internet. But as you can see, this tweet alone has gotten a fuckload of attention. Oh, I highly doubt that. We're not, we're not that big, Red Dog. They, they tend to be mad. I don't know. Maybe we are. Who knows? I'm sure I'm on some list somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Take a look at this. Here's a photo of her... Of her... Um, look at this. Here's a photo of her activity over um, December 20, 25th to December 26th. 14,000 14.7 thousand replies. 2K1 replies to individual posts. Over 50... Over... Sorry. I'm sorry. Over 523 replies per day. All because of the average of this one. Yeah, I'm probably on that enemy list. Yeah, that's true. Aw, thanks, Brent Mouse. Appreciate that. Yeah, this is very, very strange. So, as you can see, a fuckload of attention. And all of this happened after she outed that Nazi. So, now we have to talk about something else. Before, um... Yeah, I probably am. Oh, actually, funny fact. This is a little, little... Um, anyway, let me just talk about something now. Because there's this thing that I keep seeing happening. And I want us to become aware of it. I think it's really important that we fucking figure this shit out and, uh, and, and fix it, okay? So let me just give you a little bit of a summary of how this works um actually you know what i can do a drawing we haven't done it i haven't done a drawing i haven't done a shitty version of the of the uh of of the of the what's the thing the draw the draw streams i suck at drawing but sometimes i think it's necessary to do so let me just bring this up let me just bring up my little crita here and and i'll show you what i'm talking about i i am terrible at drawing i'm miserable at it but i think i can illustrate nonetheless um, some cool things. So let's see here. 
Here we go. Okay, create. All right, take a look at this, okay? Where do we go? Let's go, let's go with something like this. Let's go with uh, the red. So here's what tends to happen, okay? You have, let's do a uh, random person. Here we go. Here's random good person on Twitter. Wait, let's make them blue because blue is a nice color. Here, we'll make them like teal. Here's random cool person on Twitter. Brink, brink. They're happy. They're tweeting. They're doing something productive and cool, right? Like they've got their little phone here. They're tweeting. They're doing some cool shit. Maybe they're teaching you something. Maybe they're exposing fascists, whatever, right? Maybe they're just a musician, okay? Now this person draws the ire grr, of the fucking Nazis. Here we go. We got a little Nazi over here. We'll give him like this. We'll give him a little thing like this, and we'll give him a little black armband. Here we go. He's got his little armband here. Bam. There you go. See, we got a Nazi over here. Very unhappy. So they draw the ire of the Nazis, okay? <laughs> I drew you silent. There you go. So here's the Nazi. The Nazis are very angry. They're extremely mad. So you piss them off, often rightfully. Give them the shitty stash. Yeah, I'll give them the little mustache. There we go. There's the little Hitler stash. Okay. Yeah, we gave him the we gave him the Nazi mustache. So then what happens is, watch this. There's the magical process that happens. So these people who hate them say, okay, what are we going to do? So they're mad. They go like this. And then they get together with their other Nazi buddies. And they go on poll. Twitter or Gab, Parler, whatever you want to say. Gab. Wait, here. Actually, it's poll, Telegram. Discord. Whatever. Wherever they go, they go and they tell all their friends and they get real mad. And then somebody comes up with a post. And it usually looks something like this. IRC is still big in Nazi circles. Yeah, because it's secure. And then you have your little poster here. Bing. Hold on. Let's give them properly colored eyes. Boop, boop. And they go. Blah, 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 blah. Accusation. Boom. Now, this person will probably be anonymous. They'll have a, I don't know, maybe a hammer and sickle in their bio. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Maybe a little, oops, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Oh, why did it change color? Fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Here we got a little hammer and sickle in their bio. And they'll have like 5K followers, okay? So you'll see this kind of thing happen. So they're mad at this. They go to disc poll telegram. They have their little anonymous communist poster and then this person spits it out to everybody else oh yeah you could have roses you there's a couple of variants and they go out like this psh, 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 psh. and then it gets interpreted by a little thing called internet teenagers here we go we're gonna draw them up here we go there's lots of them Bing, bing. There's tons of them. And they're all anonymous. And none of them know how to use the internet yet. Some of them might be Nazis. Some of them might be lefties. But this post is framed to get the lefty social justice concerned ones. Why do they look like middle fingers? Well, there's a reason for that. Um, we have all of this army of children, which together, all together, let's circle it up, is like x 100k so they might get a hundred thousand people that looks really horrible that's like literally not even readable here we go 100k bam and then this times 1000k shoots fucking a billion lightning bolts at one person and some people would call this 
cancel culture. Some people would call this all kind harassment campaigns. Well, it is a harassment campaign. Some people would call this a lot of different things, but it doesn't matter because at this point, nobody knows who made the original accusation. Nobody knows what the original accusation was. And in this little process here of going from this post over to this, we have the, um, the things that um, Contra talked about, you know, essentializing, um, the essentializing and the uh, hyperbole, etc. So the original accusation is like, yeah, this is like the Contra Contra stuff. This is the cancel stuff happens in here. Quote unquote, we'll put little quotes around it because I don't I don't like that term at all, but let's call it cancel. And then all of these people get involved. And the thing is, you can't do anything about all of these people. And some of these people here are very convinced. Most of these people here are very young and they're convinced they're doing something correct, right? So these people over here think they're acting in the name of social justice. Is Anon a Nazi pretending to be a leftist or just a five head? Does it matter? I'm just trying to say there's a very good chance that this one is the same person as this one, especially when you don't know who it is, especially when you, when who you don't know who the fuck it is. Yeah. It's kind of weird, isn't it? And you suddenly have thousands of children who you can't do anything against, who are calling you an anti-Semite, who are retweeting things, misinformation, and then they private their accounts and they delete it and nobody can keep track of it. And sometimes this has really, really, really negative effects. Like, for example, what happened to Merrick, right? How many, how many waves of harassment have been, uh, oh yeah, and I forgot, there's another step to this process, which is that all of this can recycle infinitely because one element, one time of being canceled provides further justification for being canceled in the future because then in the future, people go, yeah, well, wasn't this the bitch who was, um, wasn't this the bitch who was an anti-Semite? Oh yeah, I remember that. And then it repeats again and it repeats again. And it repeats again and again and again. And it gets worse and worse every single time until somebody leaves or somebody hurts themselves or they lose their job as already happened to Molly Conjure once. Really weird how this works, isn't it? So let's review real quick. Let's go back through the process. We got anti-fascist does something to piss off a Nazi. Nazi goes and runs and tells all his friends, one of them maybe, or, you know, one of them maybe is connected to a anonymous left-wing account with relatively large following who's able to get this baseless accusation with no evidence, usually well, like, like formed like propaganda, sometimes with literal fake information out to an army of children on the internet who are bored and looking to be social justice -y. And those children, and not all, it's not all children either, but it is a lot of children. It is a lot of children. I'm sorry. It's just true. It is. They go in here and they bombard the person and they get it out there. And then the, the other effect, yeah, children like kids. Yeah, children like kids. Yeah, there's a lot, as it turns out, there's a lot of teens on the internet. There's a lot of fucking teens on the internet. Did you know that? And they're not on Tumblr anymore where this shit used to happen. They're all on Twitter. And here's the weird thing, because when it doesn't matter that it's children retweeting it, it doesn't matter that it's children repeating the accusation because they're signal boosting it. They're giving so much signal boost to this to these accusations that it goes everywhere. It gets to your family. It gets to your friends. If you unless you're really, really sneak sneakerative online, unless you're nice and sneaky and you keep your your everything down on wrap. Um, other than that, and keep in mind, again, this isn't like shitting on teens. This is just a fact. There are a lot of teens who don't know how to use the internet. And there are a lot of them on the internet. In fact, that's most people on the internet. 
Well, yeah, but that's the that's the hope, right? Silent. We'll talk about that. We'll talk talk about that. Yeah, sneakerative. Yeah. Um. Well, we we did that the other day. Uh, here we somebody put up a uh, one of the mods put together a uh, a vote, and we'll we'll do a little demographic study. We'll do a little quick one, an anonymous demographic study. Um, if you could put together like one of those age bracket polls, those would be cool. Um. So. Um. Yeah. Privacy and security, yes. Privacy and security is really important. And that's something I'm going to be looking to build up in our community, is to teach people to be safer on the internet. Um, I know that sounds really lame, but it's actually super important. But anyway, that's aside from the point. We'll talk about that after. I will absolutely be doing that, 404, 100%. So, again, this process reinforces itself you see remember what i just showed you on the screen here just a couple of minutes ago remember i showed you uh where'd that go oh fuck i i put it aside here let me get it back up um look at this this is just a small example of it but this happens on a much larger level and i actually talked about this in my video on my channel there's a video where i talk about twitter and i talk about this with regards to contra points but let me just show you this so here, this is a story from a previous cancellation cycle being used to justify the new cancellation cycle. Now, this is obviously a right winger and they're trying to get in on the fun, but they're hardly the only ones involved. I mean, what we saw with ContraPoints, for example, an example of... um. You know, with ContraPoints, we saw people say, oh, well, she's repeatedly engaged in NB phobia, and now it's across the line because she had Buck Angel do a voice in the video, which I agree was a mistake. Nonetheless, you see, there you go. The cancel justifies itself. Even if they're not really connected, and even if the first accusation isn't really true, and there wasn't any NB phobia going on, it becomes true, and then it gets used to justify the next wave of harassment. This happened before, by the way, a lot. It's happened many times. But let me just give you an example of it, a very specific one. Does anybody know about Gamergate? I talk about Gamergate a lot because there's a lot of Gamergate shit that's still going on. In Gamergate, people got really mad at a handful of female devs. Notice that m almost all of them were women. Multiple of them were trans. So they're already vulnerable, which makes it easier. Um... We can talk about that after. I'll actually save that question, Nuts. Um, and then they were targeted. And every their lives were um, were put to a repeated um, cycle of hyper-analysis where it was like, oh, so like, here's an example. Zoe Quinn was one of the developers involved. She was accused of, get, of essentially fucking, it was called Five Guys, they accused her of fucking people to get favorable coverage for her game. Now, that wasn't true. That wasn't true at all, actually, as it turns out. The people who she was with didn't write about her game. In fact, they specifically removed themselves from the process. Um, but it stuck. And that justified later harassment against her, which then brought out other things that they could stretch for and say, oh, well, she's actually part of a secret SJW agenda, and it goes from there. Yeah, the game was a free game. She didn't even make any money off of it. Yeah, Five Guys, Burgers, and Fries is what they called it, because she apparently fucked Five Guys to get favorable reviews. That wasn't true, but it stuck, and that justified more harassment. And then they found other things, like, for example, um, say, aside. and I want you to put yourselves in the shoe of someone, of a, like someone online who's been accused of something. Imagine thousands of people accusing you of something that you know isn't true. So let's say somebody accused you of fucking your mother, right? And you know it's not true because you've never fucked your mom. But there's thousands of people who believe that that's the case. And then you get tired. And one time you say... Fuck you. I hate you people. Leave me the fuck alone. Or maybe even worse, maybe you actually have a breakdown from how much pressure you're getting. Not everyone can 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 handle that much attention. I mean, and I don't blame them. 
Maybe you freak out and you start posting shit, but then it just brings more people on and more people. And then people say, look at how, look at how they reacted. Look at how they reacted. That shows, that shows, right? And then that justifies even more harassment because it's now there's more evidence of you being who you are in their minds. That's pretty fucked, isn't it? That's that's pretty fucked, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But a lot of people do. And a lot of people will. Now. That's a pretty vicious cycle, right? You know? That's a pretty vicious cycle. Yeah, and on Twitter, it's especially... I mean, again, we've talked about Twitter extensively. Um, we've talked about Twitter extensively with regard to this. But it's pretty bad. You know? Um, it's pretty bad for this. Um, and there's an interesting thing that happens. Just, just to build off of that, there's an interesting thing that happens on Twitter especially which is that Twitter is really hard to follow. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to find something on Twitter? Like after it's been posted, like after a day has passed, even your own posts sometimes could be hard to find, right? You got to scroll down your timeline. It's really fucking hard to find shit on Twitter, isn't it? It's really weird. And it's also really easy to delete, to private your account and make it impossible for people to find those things. If you didn't archive it while it was live, you're not getting it. You're not getting it unless somebody else did that. It's an it's it is an amnesia machine that makes it impossible to determine the truth. But nonetheless, it enables an incredible amount of harassment frequently towards women, trans people and minorities, other minorities, I should say. It's kind of weird. And a lot of times, these things have some pretty sus starting points if you're ever, ever able to find them. Like, for example, let's compare what we're, we've been talking about with Socialist Dog Mom to the Merrick situation, which many of you have been here for. It's very strange, isn't it? Isn't it weird that a bunch of anonymous, anonymous Marxist accounts with a lot of followers, a lot of people, a lot of people here admitted they didn't even know they were following these people. They probably, you probably followed them for a shit post, right? Or something in the past. You probably don't even remember what you followed them for. And then all of a sudden, they're able to get these words out. And they're able to get these accusations out and start a shitstorm that actually harms people. Did you know? Just so you know. Now listen, I don't know how... Besides what Molly Conjure has told us in this situation, I don't know how much negative uh, effect this has had on Molly Conjure's like, life. But we do know some other people. We know ContraPoints. ContraPoints, as a result of these like multiple um, cycles of, of harassment, has stopped using Twitter entirely. And has also admitted to self-harming and becoming, and, and becoming addicted to alcohol as a result. Of, of how much she was trying to escape from the sheer and endless hatred that she was receiving online. Merrick has talked to us, our chat, we talked to Merrick about how much of an impact it's had on her. It's pretty bad, the situation that we find ourselves in right now. A situation of mysterious accounts that nobody really knows that could be anybody. Yeah, Merrick's doing okay now, yes. Um, she's been struggling with a lot of stuff. But thankfully, most of it has blown over. We're going to talk. I'm going to talk to her again soon. Um, I talked to her a little bit yesterday. So, um, mom rad, mom rad. Yeah, that's me. I'm the mom rad. I'm rad. And I'm a mom. Uh, a mom in a way of speaking. I'm trans. I don't actually have kids. But, you know, I have my imps. So, um, yeah. So, this is a cycle we keep going on. I do have Yoda. Yoda is my, yeah, it's true. I am a dog mom in that way. I'm the mother of demons. That's true. I'm an ideological mother. There we go. I teach people ideas and people grow from them, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, yeah. So, let's conclude. I guess it's let's time conclude. for the conclusion, right? It's time for the conclusion. Uh, yes, I could do that. 
silent i can definitely do that i will play that after um yeah some secret memes we got some we're working on some stuff um so let's do the conclusion the conclusion is the left the online left that's all of us or at least we hope for the online left to win. I, I think that even the libs in my audience can agree that the online left is better than the online right, for sure, right? We don't want the entire internet to be poll or 8chan or anything like that, right? And if that's the case, if that's the case, we got to do a lot better and we got to start thinking harder. And there's a couple of ways, and especially on Twitter, we need to be careful about the things we're saying, the things we're accusing, and the way that we digest this information. Now, the first thing, of course, is the imps code. Anybody who doesn't know the imps code, well, guess what? You now know it now. There you go. Immediately stop discoursing. Don't discourse on Twitter. You should discourse with people, not on public it, with weird post-it note system. Don't discourse on Twitter. Two, use Twitter to meme and cream. Have fun. Be careful with your memes. Make sure they're actually memes and not harassment. There you go. Yeah, some people have said the simp code, which we might have to revise it in the future because someone suggested adding stop spreading misinformation to the code, which, but I haven't decided yet. I have to think on that more. Um, three, promote yourself and your friends. Always good. Twitter is very good for promoting things. Your art your videos, your friends' art, your friends' videos, etc. Very, very good for it. And four, slaughter your genuine opponents in the arena of ideas. And what I mean by that is if there's right-wingers and Nazis, use Twitter to take them down. Use Twitter to dunk on them. Just don't engage in discourse. You can talk to people about your lefty ideas elsewhere. If you want to put out a hot take and leave it at that, go for it. But don't discourse. Don't get pulled into stupid year-long discussions in the comments. Yeah, we're talking about the imps code. Oh, yeah, I couldn't say it on Twitch panels. That's true. Hmm. We'll think about it. Um, so, yeah. But that's only the first part. Because we need to go better. We need to go bigger than the imps code. We need to get better at the internet as a whole. And I mean this all of the lefties. We have to get better at the internet. You, you all realize the internet is like the future right like the like imagine if lefties well we don't even have to imagine look at what happened to radio look at how radio was taken over by right-wingers like i mean completely we've talked i talk about this all the time on my channel um the radio and television to some extent got completely taken over by right-wingers television more so by neolibs but radio Far right. You listen to talk radio, there's like a 90% chance that you're going to be listening to a right-wing talk radio show. Because they saw that controlling that field of information control was incredibly important. And look at where it's landed us. Rush Limbaugh. Fucking roast in hell, motherfucker. Um, yep, I did too, Cal Dodge. Yep, I grew up listening to two of the most vile right-wingers you can imagine. The internet is the future. So we need to take it seriously. We need to figure out how to be good at it, how to post effectively, how to not just repost misinformation, how to not contribute to cycles that look like this. We need to beat this shit. This has to be beaten. We can't do this. There, these guys, the Nazis, are taking advantage of well-meaning but otherwise uninformed people to cause great harm to anyone whose head manages to lift beyond the, like, rat shit surface. Listen, remember, it's not a moral code. The imps code is not a moral code. It's a code for usage. It helps you use it better. There might be a time when breaking the imps code would be important. You're not going to be morally judged for that. It's a code to help you use Twitter better. Now, you got to know the code to be able to break the code. But it's a code of practice. It's like how to use a hammer. How to use Twitter is the imps code. If your morals are meme and cream, well, then it might be a moral code for you. But the code is really important. Imps code, fucking important. 
the code be more like guidelines. That's true. It do be more like guidelines. I agree. Our media needs to dwarf theirs. Well, guess what? We have an advantage right now. But we got to keep pushing. So, yeah. As far as that radio thing didn't happen to Israel. I don't know about that. I don't know about the history of radio in Israel. Um, some places have robust radio, um, you know, radio uh, communities and, and culture. In America, radio culture is right wing. Radio, especially talk radio, AM radio, is right wing as fuck. I mean, Rob Knorr has a radio show in America. Rob Knorr. The wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute guy. That guy has a radio show in America. What the fuck? Our radio, yeah, I'm not kidding you. It's local, but it's still a radio show. Yeah, it's wild. I know. And he goes on that radio show in the morning and streams about how everyone, all lefties are cultural Marxists that want to invade and mind control your children. I'm not kidding you. They tried to make a left-wing radio network in the 2000s called Air America. It failed. It's where Rachel Maddow got her start. Yeah, it's also where Sam Cedar got his start. Sam Cedar was a huge part of Air America. In fact, Sam Cedar has a whole episode where he talks about it. All right. So the conclusion, socialist dog mom does a lot of good work. And the sheer amount of hatred and vitriol that she received on social justice grounds that she's an anti-Semite for something she didn't do. She didn't do. In fact, she did the opposite. Is pretty fucked. And we've got to get better at this. That's the drama mama conclusion. We've gotten to the bottom of the drama. He hasn't. But he has tweeted. So maybe somebody's running his account. Mm. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that socialist dog mom doesn't appear to have done anything wrong here and certainly doesn't deserve the back backlash. And it is very interesting that the backlash occurred exactly one day after she successfully outed a violent civil war hungry Nazi from a local police department. Very, very weird, huh? Isn't that strange?